Good morning, family and friends, and welcome to the Woke Nation. Also, to this new day, it's our day, our great day, our day of joy. What's up, Michelle? You're welcome. I welcome you also to this live broadcast where we feel free to share knowledge, seeking and spreading the knowledge of factual truth without fear or favor. So, you are welcome. Join me as we grow together in knowledge is very important knowledge is the greatest not love love is emotional then love doesn't does not last but knowledge lasts once you have that knowledge no one can take it away from you they may lock you up they may kill you but it's yours forever you'll come back continue in that knowledge so welcome you also you know some or most of my posts or some of my posts are like bible study so because i have the bible knowledge and uh, the same way they use it to deceive us and using it to undeceive us to open our eyes for us to see the lies in in it deceptions contradictions and uh, how it was a book written to control the slaves or the gullible people that have the fear of the slave master which happened to be God or Jesus Christ. So those are the ones that live by the book. The wise don't live by the book. The wise use their brain. The wise judge. That's why I think First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10 or 10, 15 whichever it is. Paul say, I am speaking to the wise. Judge what I say. The judge, the, the judge, I mean the wise will judge. The gullible ones don't judge. The foolish one don't judge. That one, the slave master said, judge not, so you will not be judged. Condemn not, so you will not be condemned. Because they are slaves. They are gullible. They they don't have their own mind. So they follow the, 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 the slave master, their shepherd, to be feeding them. They can't do anything to feed themselves. They are waiting on the slave master to feed them. So the slave master tell them, do not judge. No love your enemies, you know. Feed them when they're hungry. You know, don't worry. There is God who will fight for your battle. Bullshit. <laughs> Remember, anytime I say Bible something, I always say bullshit because that's what it is. And if you're a Muslim or a Christian or Jew and you're upset at people like us speaking against Christianity, Islam, or Judaism, you are a, you are you are a stupid person. If you really believe God is real, why are you the one speaking for God? Why are you the one fighting for God? Let God fight his battle. Let God fight his battle. And I think it's part of what I want to share with us about the wisdom of Gideon. If you read Judge, the book of Judges, chapter 6, you will see the wisdom of Gideon's father. Gideon's father said to the people that came demanding for the head of his son for destroying the images of power. He said, if you are fighting for Baal, you need to be killed. If Baal is God, let Baal fight his battle. Why are you fighting for God? Why are you fighting for Allah? Why are you fighting for Jehovah? Why are you fighting for Jesus? Why are you fighting for Yahweh? 
when you are speaking for them, when you are fighting for them, it simply means they are non-existent and useless in reality. You are the one that is making them seem to have life or any power. They cannot arrest anyone and they cannot kill anyone. And let me say something. When you see awakened being arrested or killed, don't feel bad about that. It's supposed to encourage you and it's supposed to prepare you because you may be next. What if you are if they arrest you or kill you? What you're supposed to do? Keep doing the good work, trying to wake our people up. See the Muslims that are killing people in Nigeria, the reason why they are doing it is because many people are cowards in Nigeria. I remember one time the Igbo people pick up weapon, uh, I mean, begin to kill Muslims also in the north. They stop, I think it was 1980, if I'm correct. They stop killing. The reason why you see Muslims killing in any country, when I was in theological school, they call it the doctrine of non-retaliation. Because you find that some of the Bible lands in the Bible today is occupied by Muslims, right? So they taught us that it's because Christians have that doctrine of non-retaliation. So it's because they know you will not retaliate. You will say, God, we fight your battle. They will keep coming. But if they know you will fight, they will not. That's why I say I don't practice forgiveness. But forgiveness is injustice. Forgiveness is evil. Forgiveness means you are supporting evil in the land. But when you practice fairness, of course, no one will try to come. If, if a thief knows you are well, 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 well uh, fortified and well protected, do you think they will come? No, they will not come to steal because they know that if they come, you are God men or bodyguard may kill them. So they will try to find another way to see if they can get something from you. But they will not just come out and be talking to you. You see people just coming out. It's people that have weapon and money that you see them making noise. If you don't have weapon and money, you are just a slave. They control you. All those ones, you say what power. What made them what power? Weapon and the money, period. It's not any God. It's not any Jesus. It's not any religion. It is weapon and the money. And when you have that weapon, anyone that's saying you want to come and kill, you see our people saying, okay, come back. They are killing our people in the villages. You have Igwe in your town, Igwe of your town. You, some of you have even vigilante. And you, some of you have people in the Nigerian military uh, army. You have people, policemen, oh dear. What are they doing? But, and you still also go to church, uh, especially you that come from the eastern part of Nigeria. you saying there is God, but they are coming and killing you. Where is that God? That's what I'm saying. So that's why I titled this, Demand for Reproofs. If they can't give you reproof, trash it. If they say, oh, you are asking stupid questions, or you are asking a childish question, why you are asking, listen, I believe this, or I used to believe this, I need proof for me to continue with this belief, for me to continue with these sayings, for me to continue with these things, I need tangible proof. If they cannot provide it, leave it. No matter what, how long you have been in it, it's better you start afresh today. It's never too late for you to start again. Don't worry, yes. I've been living in America. If I tell you how many losses I have had in America, I mean financially, I'm still paying student loan. What I went to school for, uh, that's not what I'm doing. I'm working even far below what I went to school, but I'm still paying it. And is it affecting me? No. Sometimes when I think about it, I say, forget it. I have been locked up in prison. I have been hospitalized in hospital. I survived those two things. There is no. I I, I said to people, if it's financial problem, if it's, if it's money problem, to me it's not a problem, because that thing you say you need money to solve is not actually problem. It's not problem if you think about. It, it's not the real problem. The real problem you don't need money to solve it. You just live your life naturally and take care of it. Demand for reproofs. And whatever you are doing. So welcome to Bible study. Let me start with the book of Judges, chapter 6. Judges, chapter 6. Let's do this. It's our thing. Let's open the eyes of our people. Please feel free to always share what you want to share on the comment box anytime I am doing this. Because we are in this together. So let us show our people you know there is a way they can come out of that darkness especially those abrahamic religions they are our major problems in africa and until we trust them we will keep suffering unnecessary 
unnecessarily as a people. Um, Judges chapter 6. Let me read verse 6, then verse 11 to 13. There's a demand for real proofs. Don't demand for, okay, just tell me. Tell me, is, it, is there God? They say, yeah. If you look, who made the sky? Who made, yeah, my ancestors made the sky. My ancestors made the sun. My ancestors made the moon. Why wouldn't you believe that? If you don't believe that, you are unbeliever, you are infidel. <laughs> they don't believe that, they say no. But the one you believe, they tell you that there is God that created. Have you seen that God? No. Nobody can prove that. God did not create anything because God does not exist. We are the gods and goddesses that create, created and still create things. It's our world. We are one with the world. We are worldly people. We are carnal. And the carnal people made God. God is under carnal people. God cannot do anything without carnal people. God is useless without carnal people. He says, so Israel, you know, remember when you read Israel in the Bible, is a fictional state and they represent white people okay israel god jesus is talking white people choosing people the elect is talking about white people you're supposed to know that he says so israel was great and when you're talking about israel choosing people are really evil people people that invaded other people land kill them and take their land steal their things and the claim is their own so israel was greatly impoverished because of the midianites and the children of Israel cry out to the Lord. See, that's what they deceive you with. They never cry out to the Lord. They try to solve their problem by all means possible, with knowledge. White people don't solve their problem by praying. They don't. When they're praying, they're just deceiving you black people so that you think it is prayer they're doing that. When they do something, they tell you it is God. You have a, so you see black people quoting the same thing. But they put in the Bible, if not for the Lord who has been on our side, let Israel say, if not been, if it had not been at the Lord who has been ours on our side, our enemies will be eating us. All oh, that bullshit. No, use the, or the all the world like the Americans. The American government is having with um, the in the Middle East or people that they, they don't like like that, like uh, about Osama bin Laden, Afghanistan war and all that. Did you see them cry unto the Lord and the Lord said, don't worry, I will handle the case, leave vengeance for me. No, they went after them. But black people, if it were black people, they would say, okay, we forgive. Okay. I hear some people crying out saying that um, Israel and the United Arab Emirates, you know, they are talking war, um, they are talking for peace, right? And some people are making, you know how many times they have been talking for peace even before you were born? They are deceiving you. There will never be any peace among them because they are occupying our land. They are strangers. They are evil people occupying our land. They will never know any peace until they give us back our land and go back to wherever they come from. But for so long they are occupying that land, they will never know any peace. Even those white people that are occupying South Africa, they will never know any peace until they leave. You don't know what is going on. And you say, some people say, oh, I thought they taught us in Quran. You know, we should not uh, do anything with uh, all the infidels or something. No. The real Arabs, those real people that gave you, that you think they are the main people in Islam and Christianity. No, they don't really care. Or Judaism, they don't really care about all that shit you care. They don't care about going to heaven or hell. All they care is the land they are occupying. They are thieves, they are robbers, they are criminals. And that's why they became slave masters. We are not. So because of the Midianites, the Israelites, the Israel was impoverished. Then verse 11, hear yeah, what he says. He said verse 11, see this line. Yeah, verse 11, I think, but if you are afraid to go down, we can Oh, man, who, who take me to 7? I see. This uh, Judges chapter 6, verse 11. He said, now, the angel of the Lord, know that angels never existed. It does not exist. There's no, there's no such thing like angel. So any book that has angel in it is a work of fiction. Angels are fictional beings. They don't exist. He said, and the angel of angel of the Lord came and sat under the uh, terebinth tree, the tree, uh, which was an offering, which belonged to Joash the Abazurite, 
why his son Gideon threshed wheat in the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. So he wasn't the hider. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Oh, you need to hear how Pentecostals always use this mighty man of valor. Some of them have group, mighty men of valor. Oh, that. How about a mighty woman of valor? No. Okay. Gideon said to him, here is what I'm saying. Oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? If the Lord has been with us, why then all this happen, has happened to us? And where are all his miracles which our fathers told us about, saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites factual truth is not gaze work say so where is this god they taught us about if god is with us where are all his miracles our fathers told us two two important questions that gideon asked that angel in that story if God is with us, why all this befalling us? Why are we suffering? You say, if God be for us, no one can be against us. If God is with us, why is hunger against us? Why is coronavirus against us? Why all this war against us? Why all this evil happening against us? But you say, where there is this, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then why don't we have liberty if God is with us? Why are we not having the liberty? They say, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where is that liberty? Nice question. And they say, where are all those His miracles? You tell me God can do all things. Where, are, where is that God doing all things? Where are all God's miracles? Which books and the preachers told you about? You read it in the Bible. You read it in Quran. You read it in Torah. Many people have been preaching it. Imams have been preaching it. Pastors have been preaching it. Popes have been preaching it. Rabbis have been preaching it. About the miracle of God. Telling you that God parted the Red Sea. Where is that today happening? You see people of God drowning in the river, not even up to sea level, just ordinary river. They drowned there. But their God parted the river Jordan and parted the Red Sea only in the book. And they preach it in their pulpit, in their houses. But in reality, it can never happen. A true miracle will continue happening. But there is no such thing as miracle except what you have done. It is your success that is miracle. Your effort that gives birth to miracle. Without your effort, there is no miracle. The miracle is supposed to be the sole work of God that God did without man's assistance or man's contribution. Is God alive? If yes, then where is he during the war? Where is he during the hunger? Where is he during the terrorism where is he during the pandemic if god is alive you keep saying your god is alive it's just a word that doesn't prove he's alive you 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 are the one that's saying god is alive no god have shown up and saying yes i am alive no it is you who believe in that God that is making the empty noise that that God is alive, but that God is dead. Every God is dead. Every God is imaginary. Every God is inactive. Every God is speechless. Every God is man-made. You are serving man-made God, handmade God. Whether you call it Jehovah, Allah, Yahweh, Jesus, or whatever name that your God bears, that God is man-made. Where are all God's promises? Which books and people are preaching? You see them preaching 
all the manner in the name of Jesus you'll be healed there is power in the name of Jesus and you are wearing mask to worship to prevent contacting coronavirus or to obey the government law but you say that God if there is no um, um, there's no uh, how do they say it uh, like uh, they say no matter who is the president Jesus is the king uh, God is the king that's bullshit where is Jesus it's nothing where is God it's nothing they cannot do anything you see how I relax saying you see how comfortable I am saying it because they cannot do anything you are the only one that can do anything but God cannot do anything Jesus cannot do anything angels cannot do anything Satan cannot do anything devil cannot do anything all of them are bullshit they are garbage do you eat garbage if you want if you are eating garbage then we are free to worship them I don't eat garbage where is that God you that believe in that God I want you to show me that God where is that God that is the question many believers many worshipers refuse to ask even in the face of of reality when they are suffering unnecessarily people they are stronger than now coming to intimidate them controlling them they never ask that question because they trusted in God they committed everything in the hand of God yet they have not asked this question that is also in their Bible welcome to Bible study Job chapter 9 I mean, Job 35, sorry. Job chapter 35, 9 and 10, he said, Because of the multitude of oppressions, they cry out. Let me read it with uh, this translation and see how we put it. Uh, contemporary, contemporary English, English version said, In times of trouble, Everyone begs the mighty God to have mercy. In time of troubles, instead of them tackling their troubles, everyone who believes in God, everyone who have that iota of belief there is God, there is supreme being, he said they beg the mighty God to have mercy. Because of the multitude of repressions, they cry out. King James, New King James Version. But see how this version is said, verse 31 said, but no one, or, or they cry out for help because of the arm of the mighty. But no one says, where is God my maker who gives songs in the night? They refuse to, they, they cry out for help. But see how they lie to you. See the new, this a contemporary English version. How he changed it. He said, in times of trouble, everyone begs the mighty God for uh, to, to have mercy. He said, but after their creator helps them through hard times, they forgot they forget about him. You see how they remove the main thing they put in King James Version? In King, in King James Version, which using the new King James Version, I said, I said that because of the multitude of, of oppression, they cry out. They cry out for help because of the arm of the mighty. But no one says, no one asks, where is God, my maker, who gives songs in the night? Where is that God? You have to ask such question without fear of God. Ask that question without fear of wrath of God. Ask that question without fear of cause of God. Ask that question without fear of judgment of God. Ask that question without fear of uh, the punishment of God. God cannot do you anything. You have to ask that question. He cannot do you anything good or bad. Where is that God? In times of trouble, you are trouble. When you go to that man's house or to that woman's house begging for financial assistance, when you go to that hospital for treatment, where is that God? You believe he's the one that gives you life. He's the one that keeps you alive. Where is that God? When you are running away from danger, 
run away from something coming after you they tell you there is hurricane you have to move you move where is that god they tell you poker haram is coming flaming has been coming you have to vacate you run away for your life where is that God? You claim to be your creator. You claim to be the one that controls heaven and earth. You claim to be the one that provides all you need. And you will say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Where is the Lord your shepherd in times of trouble? Where is the Lord your shepherd when you go in for prayers in that church or in that deliverance center? Where is God? Who they tell you that God is with you. They tell you that God is everywhere. But you left your house to another man's house or to another place they call house of worship or deliverance center. So why is God not in your house? Why not God do that deliverance in your house? Ask and demand for real, rational proofs. Enough is enough. Stop taking bug answer or empty answer. No, you they have to give you tangible answer. Not don't worry, one day God will show Himself, God will reveal Himself. You will see the work of God. God will do this, God will do that. Ask and demand for real answers. Ask if you really care. Is it is only dummies that don't care, so they don't ask questions. Are you a dummy? If you are not a dummy, if you are not stupid, if you are not a sheep, if you are a human being, you have your brain. You must ask and demand for answers. Ask and demand for tangible proofs. If they cannot answer your question, don't join them. Don't be among them. Let them continue in their stupidity. And you go after knowledge. When you see knowledge, you see factual truth. Let me show us some wisdoms that will help us. The first one, you have seen the wisdom of Gideon. He asked question. Oh, the, you are angels, so I should not ask question. They say we should not judge. Fuck you, saying that. I ask question. If God has been with us, why is this happening to us? What is he doing? Read Job chapter 9, verse 23. Uh, you see what God is doing when you are suffering. God is laughing at your plight. God is la laughing at your trouble. God is laughing at your poverty. God is laugh laughing at your sickness. God is, you know, every day now, more than 1,000 people who believe in God dies in America. What is God doing for them? God is laughing. Why Americans are dying? God is laughing at them because they have been worshipping him and now they are dying. And the, instead of God stepping in and help them, God is laughing at their plight. So you see the wisdom of Gideon. He says, God has been with us. Why is this happening to us? And where are all those miracles our fathers told us? Are you telling us that our father lied? We want to see those miracles. You tell me in the name of Jesus, you know, you will lay hands on the sick, they will recover. Why are they not doing it today? I want to see that. So I want to talk also about the wisdom of Thomas and the Philip. You can put anyone first. But let me talk about the wisdom of Thomas. They keep telling you, don't be a doubting Thomas because they want you to be a sheep or remain sheep like them. Thomas show you the best way for you to handle every religious belief, everything anyone is preaching or teaching. Let, let's, let's read it. John chapter 20. Welcome to Bible study. John chapter 20 from verse 24 to 27. He said, Now Thomas called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So for those of you that will say, I was not there at that time. Oh, you were not there. Oh, you cannot prove that Jesus never existed. You are you there? Okay. He said Jesus is alive, right? He's not dead. According to Luke chapter 24, 36 to 43, Jesus said he had flesh and bones like us, and they can go through the doors and say, Peace be unto you. But uh, Thomas was not there when he came. 
Then the other disciples therefore said to Thomas, We have seen the Lord. As your pastor will say, I have seen the Lord. The Lord said, The Lord showed himself to me. You have seen the Lord. Okay. So he said to them, Thomas said to them who preached to him that have seen the Lord. He said, unless, oh man, I feel I'm speaking in tongue. Unless, I speak in tongue better than your pastor. Didn't you read Paul say he speaks tongue more than every other person? I speak in tongues more than all your pastors, all of them. <laughs> you know what I just speak now? Yeah. He said, unless you tell me about, oh, you have seen the Lord. You have seen the work of God. You have seen the miracle of God. The wisdom of Thomas said, unless I see in his hand the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his hand, I will not believe. Why did Thomas say that? Because anyone can dress like Jesus. Anyone can appear like Jesus. But he said, listen, I saw when they nailed him on the cross according to story. Then I need to see it until, unless I see these things, I will not believe. I, I, that's why I tell you, ask that question without fear. When you ask question, believers say, "Oh, you are incurring God's wrath on yourself." When you say there is no God, they say you are a fool. No, you are the one that is a bigger fool and stupid fool for believing without seeing. Is either you see before you believe it as a believer, or after you believe, you have to see it. He said, if you believe, you will see. Now you believe, he said, no, you will not see until you are dead. You there is nothing real after you die. You are not going to see anything. If you must see what you believe, it is now that you are alive. He said, and after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with, with them. Jesus came, the door being shut, and stood in the midst of them. Because he said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I, I will be there in the midst of them. Have you seen Jesus in any gathering where people gather in his name today? No, because Jesus never existed, and Jesus cannot show up. Jesus is not real. So he stood in the midst of them and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, It's good for you to doubt. If you don't doubt, you will not hear the truth. If you don't doubt, you will not get the real truth. You have to doubt and question. Unless I see, I will not believe. You want me to believe? No, I need to see. Because when I see, I know. When I see, I don't need to believe. I will know. And when I know, I will do it. Say, Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hand and reach your hand here and put into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Jesus did not reprove Thomas for not believing the disciples. But today you think you have done wrong for not believing you are a man of God, for not believing the prophet. They tell you believe the prophet and you shall prosper. Fuck that. Africans have been believing the prophets and they have been suffering. They are not prospered. You have to embrace science for you to prosper. Look at the more people today. Even people are getting poorer today because they have abandoned our real way which is teaching ourselves how to do business. Today, we are chasing oil money. This money. In those days, we don't even care about oil money. All you care about is providing for yourself and your family. You see what is happening in the world today? Pandemic happened, everybody is panicking. If you are making your own food, you will not panic. If you are living your own life as human being, no pandemic shall, should make you panic. People are not pan panicking just because of the pandemic. They are panicking because no more money, no more food. Some of them have money, they can buy food. Reach your hand. You requested it, you will, you will get it. Thomas doubted and he got answer. Instead of believing, he knew. And that is why I said, oh my God, 
and some people say, oh, he was calling Jesus God. No, it's like when somebody says something to you, you prove it, you say, oh my God. In America, they say, oh my word, uh, oh my whatever. No, so, some of them are trashing God, which we all must do. If you see somebody you have not believed you will meet before, say, oh my God, are you calling that person you are God? No. That's something they put there. But you see, believers, they pan on it because they're looking for word to prove their word. That they're looking for proof of their belief in the Bible, in the same Bible. You don't need the, to use the Bible to prove Bible is real. No. It's like using a thief to, to, to say the thief is not a thief. The thief will not tell you it's not a thief. The thief will tell you, you know, it is the work of the devil. So it's not a thief. <laughs> He said the thief, did you steal it? He said no. So will you believe the thief? And you see evidence. People say he stole it. They show you the video everything. But you ask him, did you steal it? He said no. <laughs> I didn't steal it. Oh. It's the work of devil. <laughs> you are using Bible. Bible is a claim. You are using a claim as a proof for what you claim that is true. No, it should be outside the Bible. If you believe there is power in the name of Jesus, according to the Bible, heal the sick, let us see. Raise the dead, let us see. Cleanse the lepers, let us see. Drink deadly poison in his name, let us see. You cannot do that. Speak new language in his name, let us see. You cannot do that. Wake up, my people. That is the wisdom of Thomas. Learn from Thomas. Unless I see, I will not believe what you are saying. You tell me there is God. Unless I see God, I will not believe. Yes, be a doubting Thomas. Don't be a stupid Peter. <laughs> okay. Be a doubting Thomas. <laughs> Don't be a stupid Peter. <laughs> Very, <laughs> that's a, a, for another day. Okay? And tomorrow I will try to speak on the recognize. Read the book of Jeremiah 35. I want us to do justice to it tomorrow, you know. Because pastors, I haven't seen pastors preaching it. They, 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 they'll be preaching Malachi 3 for you. How about Jeremiah 35? They won't preach it. Because Jeremiah 35 is actually the, like the, the life of Jesus Christ and his apostles in the New Testament. But they abandon that one because it will not bring them money. All right, so the, second, uh, the, the third wisdom I want to talk about is the wisdom of flip. Wisdom of flip. Oh man, John chapter 14. Welcome to Bible study. John 14, verse um, 7 and 8. So Jesus began to speak to his disciples, disciples, and the Philip happened to be one of them. Jesus said, If you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, from Anna on, you know him and have seen him. That's what Jesus preached. That's the, you know, Thomas was the one that asked Jesus, like when you read from verse 5, Thomas asked Jesus, say, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Thomas, I like Thomas. Follow Thomas in your Bible. Thomas will help you, since you believe in the Bible. You will be asking questions. Other disciples, no one asked questions like Thomas. Oh, let's go. Thomas said, you want us to go there again? They wanted to kill us before. <laughs> he said, Come on. Thomas is a wise. He was not a blind follower. He will always ask questions to know where we are going. I need to see the road clear before I go. I don't want to swallow your bullshit. <laughs> so Jesus began to say, I am the way to Thomas and all that bullshit. And he began to say he's the way to the Father. He that seen has seen the. Uh, I mean, if you are, if you if you have known me, you would have known my father. Oh, you're talking about your father, our father. Okay, Philip said to him in verse eight, Lord, show us the father, and it is sufficient for us. Forget all that theories, forget all that preaching, forget all that your claims. You say you have a father, and this father loves us all. This father is real. Philip says, show us the Father. It is enough. Enough. Let us see him. We don't need all this your sermon. We don't need all this your teachings about God. Show us God. Do you know what happened? 
Jesus failed to show the Father to flee and their disciples. Jesus never showed the God he preached. And everyone that is preaching God has not succeeded in showing God. Why? Because God does not exist. There is no God. A fool cannot say what I just said with my mouth, but the fool will admit that in their heart. There is no God. But the wise like myself will say it with our mouth. There is no God. Do you hear me? There is no Jehovah. There is no Allah. There is no Yahweh. There is no Jesus. There is no angel. There is no Satan. There is no demon. If you want to see any of these characters I just mentioned, look inside the mirror. <laughs> you see it. Look at you. <laughs> That is the wisdom of flip. He said, you have been talking about your father. Show us the father. It's okay. It will be okay for us. We are satisfied. When we see this father, just show us the father. We are satisfied. Jesus failed. And everyone that is preaching the same God, they say Jesus preached in the Bible, they are failing just like Jesus failed. That's why Jesus cried when they named him. He was claiming his father is always with him. The name he said, My father, my father, why have you forsaken me? Of course, he does not exist. And God is still forsaking everyone that cry out to God in time of need. Demand for real proofs. Don't just believe. Say, unless I see, I will not believe. They will not show it to you. They, I tell them, unless you tell me the date, I will not believe. You tell me, God will bless me. They are guest working. Because they know you are determined to make it. They can see it. You know, when you determine to make money, when you determine to be rich, it will be written all over you, but you don't know. Even when you're going for that seminar, you, you are determined to make it. They will see it while you're coming. They will see the, 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 the vibe. They will see the energy. This guy wants to make it. They will say, the Lord will make a way for you. Make it. No, it's not any Lord making the way for you. You are, you are determined to make it. So they begin, ask them for date. They will not give you the date because they, they will tell you, we will pray, we will go. God, why are you going? If God will make a way, let God make a way and they lead you. Not you going. You are the one leading yourself, not any God. Ask them for date. They will fail. Ask them to, you want to see the person they are talking about, they will fail. They tell you, you cannot see it. You need to see the tangible proofs. You need to see the tangible evidence of what you believed, of what you had, or what you saw. That you see something doesn't mean that is how it is. Yeah, they came to church and gave testimony, said, the Lord blessed me with this new car. Some of them prostituted prostitute to get that car. Some of them killed to get, get, get that car. Some of them lied to get that car. You don't know what they did to get that car. They won't give you the details. A pastor who is investing in stock market or doing some other dubious business, sending people to carry drugs or doing human trafficking, then tell you it is God blessing them. They're spreading money. Nobody that work hard to make money will come and spread huge amount of money. Look at the parties in America when they are doing parties. You see the hardworking ones. They make they will, they will come with twenty dollar or fifty dollar. They change it into one one dollar and they come and spray and go home. But you see people carry bundles of money spreading. No, that's not hard work and money. It is illegal money. If they get it illegal way, they get it so cheap so they can throw it around. No, it's nothing. Then until you begin to find out, oh, they arrested them all. Oh, that bullshit. Is. Okay. But they already misled some people. You think, oh, because they're smart. No. We have to go back to our root, my people. You must make your wish a reality unless it is just empty wish made to deceive. Like many people wish, I wish you were, they don't. If they wish you were, let them do it. <laughs> let them do something to make you were. They would do it. I wish you were. I wish the Lord heal you. No, why are you wishing the Lord heal me? Say, heal the sick. Heal me now. Let us pray. I pray that I know you are pretending. Prayer is pretense. If you say the Lord, there is power in God or Jesus, let it happen now. You must make your wish a reality. 
The wish you cannot make a reality is hearsay, and nobody needs it, including you. Every word, every promise, every testimony of God or Jesus are all liars, or are all lies. They are designed to deceive the gullible, which happen to be slaves. Promises of God, they are all lies. Words of God, they are all lies. Work, wonders of God, testimonies of God, all of them are lies designed to deceive the gullible. Deliver yourself. If God is alive, let us see God. No revelation. Don't tell me revelation. God will bring you. No. I don't need revelation. If God promise it, let us see it in reality. Not when I die. God will bless me when I die. That's bullshit. God will bless me Sunday. No, that, that Sunday, let it be today. Let it be today. I want to see that God blessing today. Not me going to work and after I succeed, you tell me that's the blessing of God. No, it's not. If God worked miracles before, let that same God work miracles now. If God cannot work miracles now, that God is dead. If God is alive, he should continue working miracles. For those of you that believe that God created you, if God actually created you, you're not supposed to marry or have sex to have children. God should continue creating people. But he cannot. Because God does not exist. A God that cannot prove his own existence, that is the only tangible proof of God's existence. God himself showing up. It's not you telling me, look at the no. God himself showing up is the tangible evidence of God's existence. But the God that cannot prove himself to exist, that God is non-existent. That God does not exist. But a man-made God, that God was made by man to deceive man. And the truth is this, take it or leave it. That God is useless in reality. Trash that God and live your life because life is good. Peace.